All right, thanks for reading that, Lewis. So James chapter 3, that's going to be one of the main passages in, in today's sermon. Uh, but our text verse for today is uh, Psalms 39.1. Psalms 39.1. Feel free to follow along if you've got your Bibles. Otherwise, it will be on the screen if I'm good with the cursor. Um, so Psalms 39.1 says, I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, let's pray to you today to, to bless me uh, while I preach your word, Lord, that I may be able to preach it with clarity, uh, with boldness and courage, Lord, in front of the congregation, and that I also may edify them, which, uh, which is the main goal of, the, of this sermon, Lord, that I can bring um, maybe some reproof in their lives if they need reproof when they hear the sermon, Lord, and, and if, if uh, they need edifying on this topic, Lord, that it may touch their hearts, Lord, and they uh, can uh, uh, reprove their lives of any wickedness that they have, Lord. Um, this sermon's for every Christian, Lord, so just pray that uh, everyone here is attentive and that I, I can preach your word with boldness, courage and clarity, Lord. In the precious, loving name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, a text verse was Psalms 39.1. That was Psalms 39.1. Tonight, I will be speaking about the correct and incorrect use of our tongue. Lips, mouth, or, or um, voice. So, and how to bridle and control it. So the main, the main areas I'll be focusing on is the correct, the incorrect, and how to bridle and control the mouth. So why I chose this sermon is because I thought I had fallen in error in the past with the way I use my voice, the, what I say with my tongue, and how I convey a message to someone. And, and I thought that this would be a, a great opportunity to, to share uh, the, what I've learned from the Bible to everyone here, and that they may also take it upon yourselves to, to um, reprove if there's any reproof needed in your lives. And I wanted to study it out. So I've done an extensive study into it and it was just, there's just so much in the Bible on, on, the, on the tongue. Um, so it's extensively from right at the beginning in Genesis to right to Revelation, it talks about how we should use our tongue, what people say and how they fall into error and what evil the tongue is. So the tongue is one of the littlest members in our body. It is difficult to tame and control. It possesses great power over the members in our body and it is full of deadly poisons. The tongue or the mouth, which are synonyms in the Bible, uses tongue, mouth, lips, voice, as synonyms in the, of, of what that member is. So, you will hear me use uh, interchange words throughout this sermon as, as the passages are brought up. Um, so it's important, this, because it's mentioned so much in the Bible, it's important to every Christian to, to understand the way we should use our tongue, our voice, and, and how powerful our tongue is. So if we use our tongue righteously, we can do great works for Christ, such as soul winning, uh, reproof, edifying of other Christians. Um, but if we use our tongue unrighteously, we can cause great divisions uh, and strife and envying in the world, as you would have heard from James 3. Um, James 3 tells us that no man can tame the tongue. So it's a powerful member in the body. But today we sometimes see unsaved people speaking more righteously than saved people. And that, that's a great shame of, of saved people. If we, if we see unsaved people speaking more Christian-like than us saved people. That's a greater shame uh, upon us and actually brings reproach to the name of Christ. So we all fall into this condemna condemnation as we, because no man can tame the tongue, right? So many a time we, we call it, it's, it's just a slip of the tongue, sorry, I misspoke or whatever, but it can cause great more damage than just that. So some people will slip their tongue and they might not realise it and they might need to get pointed out in their lives, but some people use their tongue to, to actually harm others. And, and this goes for saved people too. And, and we've all experienced this in our lives um, over so many years, particularly over the last 12 months with certain people 
that they can, also, they can cause great divisions and strife in other people's lives. So rather than getting right with God, studying this out, they'll continue to go about their course. That's why we need the word of God to, to reprove us if there's any, in, any errors. So that said, Christians disregard what the Bible says on the tongue many a time. And, then, and, they're, and they don't understand that the tongue is full of deadly poisons. So we're going to go through James 3, most of the verses in James 3, and I'll take you to other places in the sermon. But James 3, we're going to start at chapter... Yeah, twice. Yeah, so we're going to start at verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and is able to bridle the whole body. So James 2, uh, so James 3 verse 2 is saying that, that if we're able to bridle the tongue, we're able to bridle the whole body. So in uh, verse 3 it says, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are they uh, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, withsoever the governor listeth. So, verse three and four are using analogies or, or, or analogies of, of two items that we that people use in, in in the world to control a bigger object, right? So the put you know what a bit of the horse's, uh, in the horse's mouth is, is, that, is that I think it's just a little, like a stick that goes across the horse's mouth. And if you pull one way, the horse will be directed one way. And if you pull the other way, the horse will be directed the other way, right? So that small item can direct a, large, a, a much bigger object, right? And it's the same with the helm uh, of, a, of a mighty ship or a great ship. It, the helm is basically, I think, John will know maybe a bit more than this, is basically the rudder or the steering wheel that controls the rudder. Yeah, it's the steering wheel that controls the, the, the ship. So that, that object, controlled by one man, and we, and we see all these big, great cruise ships, how, how, how massive they are, hundreds of metres of long cruise ships. That one man controlling that one item can move that ship wherever it needs to go. And that's the same with our tongue. If we're... If, if, our tongue can, uh, our tongue, um, our tongue can um, can, uh, can control a very uh, uh, a greater object. So if we can control our tongue, we can control our whole body. So verse five, even so, the tongue is a little member and and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And verse six it says. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. So verse 6 is telling us that, that it, it can defile the whole body. But I believe also that it, that it is the member that causes us to sin first in, in, in the world. I, I I believe I started this out through the Bible and I, and I come to that conclusion that I believe that the tongue is the member that causes us to, to break the law of God, right? So if you think about it, and I was talking to Anthony about this couple of, or last week, I think, um, that, that when we're younger and we sin, we first, come, we first offend at one point and then when we're guilty of all, as James 2 says. So when we first offend at one point and we come into the condemnation and we need a saviour, it's often when we use our tongue, when we're younger, when we disobey our parents, they tell us to do something, we say no, or, or, or whatever, something like that, or we lie to them. We, you, you broke the TV, and you say, no, I didn't break the TV, but they, they know that you broke the TV. So it's one of the first, it's, I, I believe it is the, fir, is the member of the body that causes us to f first break God's law. And once we break God's law, we need a saviour. So, and that's what I believe verse 6 is saying. It says, And setteth on fire the course of nature. So the tongue sets on fire the course of nature. What's going to happen, right? And it is set on fire of hell. So that course of nature that happens actually is setting us to hell. Right? So in verse, 
in verse seven it says, "For every for every kind I oh, use the screen for every kind kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poisons." So, verse eight tells us no man can tame the tongue. Verse nine says. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the solemnitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Right? So we can use our tongue to bless God, but we can also use our tongue to curse man. And it's saying that, they're, they're made, uh, that man is made in the solemnitude of God. Right? And it, it says it ought not to be so. So we can use our tongue to bless and curse. So we shouldn't be using our tongue for both. We should be using our tongue for blessings. Doth a fountain, continuing in verse 11, doth a fountain send, for, uh, doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a, either a vine, figs, can so no fountain both doth uh, both yield salt water and fresh. So verse eleven and twelve are using analogies of a fount, a fountain or a waterfall, right? Not being able to set forth both sweet water and bitter, right? And it's the same with a, a fig tree; it can cannot bear figs and olives, and that's the same, and that's just goes with verse uh, 9 and 10, that blessings and cursings, it shouldn't be one or the other. It, can, it should only be one. If, if, um, it shouldn't be both, so it should only be one. If we are wise Christians, we should, we should show our knowledge of our works through a good conversation which contains meekness of our wisdom. So continuing in verse 13. Who is a wise man and endureth with knowledge among you? And let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye, uh, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. So ultimately what comes out of our mouth proceeds in our hearts, which is what the rest of the chapter is talking about. So what we have in our hearts will actually be exposed through our mouth. So if we, if we have a heart problem, we'll have a tongue problem, a mouth problem, lips, whatever wor words used in the Bible, throughout the Bible. So, and how do we know by our words that we have a, uh, uh, that we have a heart problem? Well, let's go, let's go to a, a verse that will tell us that. Use turn, if you, if you are following along, use turn to uh, Proverbs 2, and I'm going to read out of Luke 6.45. Luke 6.45, a good man out of, out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So what's coming from your heart, out of what, what's in your heart is what's going to come out of your mouth. In, in James 1.26 says, If any man among you seem to be religio religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. So your religion's pointless to other people if you, can bri if you bridleth not your tongue. If you cannot control your tongue, your, your religion is vain to others. All right, Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2.10 if you're using Proverbs 2, we're going to start in verse 10. And this, uh, this will give, this is very strong, these are very strong passages that talk about the tongue. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. So, you'll find in this verse, we're looking for one in particular word, and i probably underlined it, I think, yeah. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, who leave, the, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, 
whose ways are crooked and they fraud in their paths to deliver thee from the strange woman even from the stranger which flattereth her lips so we look, we we saw there mentioned three times in that in that passage that frowardness is brought up froward or frowardness is brought up three times now frowardness is to commit continually disobedient so con- to be continually looking for strife looking to attack someone is is someone that's difficult to deal with basically so in our lives uh, this passage is actually actually telling us that we should not uh, we should not even speak to these people it says it says in verse 12 to deliver thee from the ways of the evil man so it's calling that person that's forward an evil man from the man that speaketh forward things so he's an evil man and we should be we should not even be with with that person whether they it doesn't matter whether they be church members or friends if there's someone that's a forward that speaks forwardly the bible describes that person as the as an evil man right and they need reproof and correction so so people like this will often speak speak lies dirty jokes they're aggressive they slander complain um etc right and 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 you and you'll see people like this you'll hear people like this you you, uh, you shouldn't but if you've listened to um um morning radio shows for example they will they will just talk about the most disgusting perverted crap in the world just the most disgusting stuff and the people will call up and tell about the most disgusting things in their lives and they'll be like oh well, it's the 21st century and and everything's okay in this in this in this world and and being growing up on uh, in the construction industry being around men or uh, or day long is they they like listening to crap like that a lot a lot of we, a lot of people think women like listen to things like that gossip about stuff like that but men enjoy listening to stuff like that and they are, and I'll, I'll be with employees at work and they have their they bring their own radios in and they and they put the radio on maximum in the morning and it's usually like i think they do it from like 6 to 9 or something these radio hosts and uh and they choose that time because that's when the most people are listening that's when the most people are listening to the radio because they're they're on their way to work they get caught in the M5 or traffic they sit there for a couple of hours and just listen to filth right and and then soon and I start a new job and I was thinking and oh yeah, I'm getting away from that because that's what the last employees used to do at our factory and and, and I just couldn't handle it I just just have to shut off after a while then you start a new job and then they listen to the same filth in the mornings so i just usually that this one's a portable radio that people take around i just turn it off as soon as i get there i can't stand listening to that crap because what happens is you hear that and you and you will li- you will listen to it and, you, and it will absorb in you 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 it will go into your heart and after a few weeks or months you actually start speaking like these people right so it consumes you and that's why verse 12 is saying uh, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man from the man that speaketh forward things and these are forward things so we're going to continue on in uh, proverbs 10:6 if you are following along proverbs 10:6 uh, if you just go to proverbs 10:6 I'll, I'll keep going in um, the previous one actually so so don't listen to these people these these people can include saved people also saved people can talk like this these days with social media especially in today's world people are talking not so much as I'm talking to you now they're talking through a computer through a keyboard they, they their messages their voice their tongue is is this keyboard now but that keyboard is what's com- what they're typing on that keyboard is what's coming from their mouth uh, from their heart sorry because they have a froward heart and that will be put through uh, a message on the keyboard the the problem is this is getting worse these days because because people don't have the boldness to say what they say through a keyboard through a person face to face it's like if i was to type this message of hate to brother alex and i see my church hey brother 
how are you, you know. But, but people don't have, uh, don't have the boldness to say it face to face. So it's actually getting worse. So people aren't talking to people and confronting people on issues face to face anymore. Doing it through a keyboard. But there's also certain people that think standing behind a pulpit or automatically gets you this divine authority to speak forwardly and to rail. And, that, and, and, and nowhere in the Bible does it say that anyone's exempt from, uh, from, uh, the, evil man, than, from the evil men. So if, if there's someone standing up behind the pulpit and he's speaking forward things and he's always contentious, you go up to him, talk to him after the service or whatever, and he's always hard to deal with, continually continually just can't have a conversation with him. And they speaks forward things, it's the same applies to them. Or they think as long as they put it on, on a YouTube channel, they record themselves for 10 minutes or so, then that's fine. No, it's evil, it's forward. It doesn't matter what form it's done by, if it's done, up, it done here, or if it's done in your private lives, it's forwardness, it's evil. It shouldn't be happening. And what's fraud? Continually contentious, hard to deal with, wanting to stir up trouble and wanting to fight. And, no, and like I said, no one's exempt from this. And, but we all fall into error. We all fall into this temptation to speak forwardly. And, it, and in James, as you heard before, that no man can tame the tongue. And that's why we know that this will apply to our lives. And that's why this sermon is necessary for all Christians. Because we'll all go through this in our lives. So, turn to Proverbs 10. In Proverbs 10. So, we are looking at right and wrong ways of using the tongue. So, the, the, so we're looking at what we can do to get right and how we use our tongue and what also are the wrong ways of using our tongue. So, Proverbs 10, 6. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence... Covereth the mouth of the wicked. The mouth of the right, of, uh, of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. So it's, it's, it's even associating that the mouth of an evil man or, or someone that speaks frowardly is actually associated with violence. Right? So it, you can get to that stage where what happens with your mouth, what you say from your mouth, can cause contention, can cause violence. Right? So we continue in Proverbs 10.31. It says, The mouth of the just, so we're talking about the just man now, bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. So, Someone that's wicked will speak frowardness. But, but, uh, but someone that is righteous will speak wisely. Right? So it's very important that we show ourselves whether we're righteous or wicked. And hopefully we show ourselves to be righteous. But at the same time, we can show ourselves to be wicked by what comes out of our mouth. So in Proverbs 10.8, Proverbs 10.8, it says, the wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. He that winketh with the eye causeth, causeth sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. Now what's prating? Prating is someone that speaks at length about something. Right? Oh, it's all, it can also be uh, in, in exchangeable with vain jangling or something like that. Someone that just goes on extensively about a topic. You, you, you would talk about, um, what's an example? You would talk about the Bible with someone about a certain topic. About, let's say, the Trinity, for example. It's one that's uh, a, a recent issue. And, they, and you, especially with the Trinity, actually, now that I start to think about it, you will see people that haven't studied it out haven't thought about it, all of a sudden becoming experts and condemning others for what, for what they believe, right? And they will go on ex excessively that this and this and carry on, this and this. But at the same, point, they haven't, they have, at the same time, they haven't got to the point 
are what they're trying to prove. And that's prating. That's someone just someone talking excessively. They're not getting to the point. They don't know what they're on about and they haven't got the right answer. So, it's a, so prating is a sin. It's a sin associated with a foolish person. So we're going to continue in Proverbs 10.13. Proverbs 10.13. In the, li- in the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. So throughout the Bible, we see many times that a, a, a righteous man speaks wisely and the mouth of a fool will speak foolishly or, or frowardly, right? But the problem is, The mouth of the fool is near destruction. He's going to condemn himself by what he says one day, right? But the mouth of the righteous obviously is 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 wise, right? So in verse in verse eighteen it says, "He that hath uh, he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool." So someone someone can hide their hatred hatred for someone with lying lips. So they they'll they hate someone, but they'll be they'll say lying things, uh, lying things. No, no, no. I, 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 you're my best friend. You're my brother, or something. And it also says there, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Right. So what's slander? So slander is 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 when you say something falsely that damages someone's image or their name or reputation. And we see this so much now in, church, in, our, in our church circles, especially, where someone will blatantly false accuse another person of this or that, or being a heretic or whatever, and they've never had a conversation with that person to get to the conclusion on a matter. But they'll, ra- they'll rather get, on, uh, turn on, get, get behind the pulpit, rail against a person, slander a person, than actually just confront them and say, look, yeah, um, I heard you say this. Is, is what do you believe on a topic, or so forth? But they, they were so when they get behind the pulpit, or, or they type messages on the internet, or whatever they do, they will actually uh, they actually damage someone's reputation, damage someone's image, or, or so forth. Damage a church, break down a church, and we, we've seen this happen before. It's, it it exists in in our church circles. It exists. Uh, in people that we know. So, and, and also, while I was studying this topic, I've also found it interesting that slander is in Australian law, right? It's, it's, it's known as defamation. So even in today's world, in today's law, biblical principles are still in, in applied. And, and the fact that we live in the 21st century and, and slander or defamation still applies in Australian law means it's something big. It's something that can cause damage. And we see all the, a lot of the laws in the Bible that are, uh, that are not in our law today, but then slanders in, in the law today. So it's, it, it's very important. And people do, uh, people do um, get jail time and get f- uh, massive fines or, um, or lawsuits because of defamation, because of slander, right? So let's continue in uh, verse 19. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. So we see that refraining, refraining your lips and, 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 or silence in your lips is associated with a wise person. So in uh, Proverbs 15, 14, Proverbs 15, 14. So basically what, we're, what we've concluded is that a righteous man will speak righteously or wisely. He will have wisdom. But someone that's a fool will speak wickedness. So Proverbs 15, 14, it says, The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. So what does the mouth of a fool feed on? Foolishness. 
Proverbs 4.24 Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. So the person that has a froward mouth, perverse, a person that has perverse lips, speaks dirty, that has issues, that's constantly, you, you, you cringe when you hear them talk, put them away. Don't have them in your lives because you will take those words in and that will affect your heart and that will come out of your mouth one day. And that applies, that applies to people in, church, in, in congregations as well. That apply, it doesn't just apply to the worldly people, it applies to people in, in church circles as well. So if we have people, according to the Bible, if we have people that speak frowardly, that speak wickedly, that slander, rail, or, what, or whatever, then we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't associate with that person. And that may be harsh to hear if they're a brother or a sister in Christ, but we shouldn't associate with this person until they've heard reproof and they've got right with God. So we're going to continue uh, in, with the sermon in Proverbs 8.8. 8. Proverbs 8.8. 8. All, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. Now that should be, as, as difficult as it sounds... And, and, and we know that the mouth no man can tame, that should still be our goal. Our goal should still be to speak righteously all the time and have no forwardness with, with what comes out of our mouth, right? Or perverseness or so forth. So that should still be our goal. Even though we may not be able to achieve it, we should still try to accomplish that goal, that all our, that all our words that come out of our mouth, are righteous. The fear of the Lord, continuing in verse 13 of, of Proverbs 8, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. So if, if we love the Lord, we should hate the forward mouth. We should hate someone that speaks with a forward mouth. We should get put them away from among us, right? If we love Christ. If we, if we want what's best for ourselves, if we want to be righteous, if we want to accomplish the goal in verse 8, then that's what should be happening, right? So we should try to always speak, speak righteously. So considering that you should hate the forward mouth and God hates the forward mouth, Let's look at what God hates. And he states them. These six things doth the Lord hate. These six things in verse uh, Proverbs 6.16, 6, these six, six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and we usually see people that have a proud look also have a, a, a proud mouth. We, we see that with, with like Hollywood celebrities or something like that. People that lift themselves up into a place that they shouldn't be lifted on, they will also have a proud mouth. And you'll see that with the way they speak. Also, it says, that's one, a lying tongue. Right? Underline there. And hands that shed innocent blood. Now, what, uh, to me, that reminds me of someone that, that uh, or, or a murderer, for example. But the first thing that comes to my mind when I see hands that shed innocent blood is people that perform abortions. That's the first thing I, he I, I, I hear when I, or I think of when I, when I see that. These people that work in these abortion clinics, they're shedding innocent blood. They are shedding the most innocent of all blood, an unborn baby. Someone that can't protect themselves. Someone that is confined in a womb and, and it's not a fetus because it's a baby. The Bible describes someone that uh, someone that's pregnant is someone that's with child. So that child is a stage of life. It'd be like me, like a lot of people say, oh, these, um, I'm using these days example, is that before it's born, it's a fetus. It's not a human yet. It's not a baby. It's not born. Okay. If I apply that, ex it, I, see, that's a stage of life. If, someone, if, if, if a baby 
is, is in the womb. That's a stage of life. That, that's, that's one of the processes in life. You know, when you get to 18 and all of a sudden you're an adult, it's the same. It's just the process of life, right? So you're growing inside your mother's womb. It'd be like me saying, well, before you're 18, you're not a human being. It's the same principle. It's just people are too one-sided. To just, they just want, no, I've got to shed innocent blood. I've got to kill this baby. That's all they want to think about. So it'd be just like me saying that oh, no, once, you're turn, once you turn 18 and you're an adult, now you're a fully qualified human. Before that, you're still in that development stage. right? So let's continue with, with the tongue. And, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Now you'll see something there, and it's mentioned twice. It's, it says a lying tongue, and it also say a false witness that speaketh lies. So we see that that someone that there's a difference between a, a, a lie and then someone that's a false witness. Yes, they fit in the same category. Yes, it's a lie, but there's two there's two types. One's worse than the other. A lying tongue can be, can be uh, said that um, um, I was sick at work. I, was, I, I didn't go to work because I was sick. But, but I wasn't sick, right? So I, I, I got a lying tongue there, right? Or Alex didn't go to, Alex didn't go to work because he, he went out to be with his friends, uh, and I, I'm telling Alex's employee that, hey, Alex didn't rock in the work today because he went out with his friends. But he's like, he's, he's sick on, at, at home, in bed. He can't move or whatever. Now, you see the difference there? When I, when I lie about myself, I'm impacting myself, right? But when, I'm a when I bear false witness, when I lie about Alex, I'm a liar Right? And I'm tarnishing his image. So that's, that's someone that's a false witness. Someone that, that will lie to, to, to be a false witness to someone. To someone that, uh, for example, says they witnessed a murder but they didn't. Right? And they're condemning this person to, to whatever Australian law will put that person. It's probably two years jail these days or something like that. But they're condemning that person to jail over murder. Right? when they didn't even actually see that murder. So that's, a, that's someone that bears false witness. Right, so there are six things that doth the Lord hate. Now, two are with the tongue, specifically with the tongue. A proud look is also can be associated with the tongue. Um, usually someone that devise, uh, deviseth wicked imaginations will also have a, a wicked tongue, right? Someone that's run, uh, swift to running to mischief now, like, that could be actions. They could be swift to running actions. Or they could be swift to telling gossip to the next person that they know about someone or whatever. Right? So you see there that, that the tongue is one of the main things that can, can do some of the main things that the Lord hates. Right? In Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 15.1, A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Now it doesn't say uttereth out foolishness, it says pours out foolishness. Someone that's a fool will constantly just pour out foolishness. 24-7, it's always foolish, just constantly coming from someone's mouth. Someone that has a foolish heart, someone that has a wicked heart, someone that's a fool will constantly talk foolishly. Now, I'll go back to verse 1. We'll concentrate on verse 1. Now, a soft answer can turn away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Now, this actually happened to me the other day, and, and when, I was, when I was putting these verses in my sermon, I actually thought of this. But, um, so, yeah, a few weeks ago when I started work, I was, because I, um, I started a new job, and it's in a completely different location to where I worked before, right? And, I, and, and, where it's located, I wasn't familiar with the area. I, I've never been there before. I've, ne I've never seen the roads around the factory or whatever. 
And when I was driving to work, the first, the first day I was driving to work, I was, I uh, can't remember, I don't even know the roads, what the roads called, but I was driving to work, and it's three lanes each way, right? And the left lane merges, it, it forms two lanes, right? And I was in the far left lane, so my, my lane was, was, was um, cutting off, like my, my lane was ending. And because I wasn't familiar with the area and I wasn't reading streets, so I'm just going, oh yeah, oh, I've got 10 minutes to get to work and GPS says nine minutes, so you know. And, um, and, I, was, and I was, and the lane was ending, and I didn't know. But I, uh, and then I, when I saw it end, when I saw it coming to an end, I think, well, it's, it's too late to break, right? I'm just go, am I either gonna hit what's in front of me or, I'm, or someone behind me is, is gonna run up the back of the car, right? Because I've just braked suddenly. So I just merged. Just thinking that, 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 that moment, you just make a decision there and then. So I just merged. And I cut someone off. And he wasn't happy about it. Because <laughs> we got to the next lights and, and, and he's got his window down and he's just going off his head. He's, he's, going, he's going crazy at me. And he wants me to wind my window down. So I wind my window down, I oblige. Then he's, going off, he's just going off his head. And, uh, and, 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 I, and I said to him, look, I just told him the truth. I, was, I said, look, I, I've never been this way before. Like, I, I, this, I'm going to my first day at work. We were waiting at the light, so it's red. We had that time to communicate. And look, this is my first day at work. Look, I, I, at this job, and I, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just not familiar with the roads. The first time being on the road. And, it, and this guy was red. This guy was just fuming. Like, he, he thought he was, he was going to have a car accident. He was, driving a, he was telling me he was driving a company vehicle and this and that. He can't afford to have a crash. And he goes, oh, okay. Oh, that's all right, mate. Don't worry. So that, that when, I, when I put this verse in, 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 my, in my sermon, that was the first thing that popped into my head. That a soft answer turneth away wrath. But if I was to confront him face to face, if I was to start doing what he's doing, what he was saying to me, start saying the same things. Mate, uh, I don't know if he was using abusive language at the time, I was just taking it all in. Anyway, and if I was to confront him the way he was confronting me, what's going to happen? It's going to stir up more anger, which is what the Bible is telling us. Grievous words stir, stir up anger, but a soft answer turns away wrath. So that, that was that example that happened. So was, that is true. What the Bible is saying is true. A soft answer can turn away wrath. Right, um, Proverbs fifteen four down. Oh yeah, you see it. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. So a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Right. We're going to go uh, to the next verse that I have, and it actually corresponds with Proverbs fifteen four. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. So the righteous man, the fruit of righteous man is a tree of life. And as we see before, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So your tongue is powerful. Both, both extends of the spectrum, it's powerful. It's powerful to destroy, cause damage. But it also has the power to change someone's eternity. So it's a powerful member of the body. And your tongue, if we use it right, that's what we'll be doing. We'll, we'll be win, in winning souls and, we'll, and what the Bible says will be wise. Now, Proverbs uh, 15.26, Proverbs 15.26 says, The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. So, when you have wicked thoughts, you have a wicked heart. We have already established that. If we, have, if we have a wicked heart, we'll just pour out wickedness, right? But if you have a righteous heart, the Bible says that, you, that your words are pure and you, are, and you speak pleasant words. And that, and that in, to the sight of God is, is, is a great thing. So, Proverbs 15, 28 says, The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. So again, the mouth of a wicked is just pouring out constant evil things. But at the start of verse 28, it says, the heart of the righteous studieth to answer. So if you're righteous, you will study, you will, you will think before you answer a matter, right? So have you ever heard of the term think before you speak? Well, it's the same concept, right? 
The heart of a righteous, right, uh, the heart of the righteous, studieth to answer. Proverbs seventeen twenty seven. Proverbs seventeen twenty seven and twenty eight says, "He that hath knowledge spareth his words." Spareth is, is, is holding back his words, right? Has, has, a, has a few amount of words. He that hath knowledge spareth his words. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Now you wouldn't think that. The common man wouldn't think that. But that's what the Bible's teaching. The Bible teaches that if you spare your words, that if you studieth the answer, that if you shutteth your lips, you can be esteemed a man of understanding. Because if you're thinking before you speak, you're off, you're, you'll often say something that's more wise. But if, if you're not thinking before you speak, right, that if you're, if you're, if you're constantly uh, speaking before you think, then you'll actually just say like, stupid things, silly things, foolish answers. You'll start prating that you, you, you know an answer to a topic. You'll just start talking about something and you haven't hit the nail on the head. Right? If, if we, we'll see here, uh, Ecclesiastes 5.2. Ecclesiastes 5.2. It says, But not, uh, be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart, thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth, therefore let thy words be few. So let your words be few. Be careful with what comes out of your mouth. Think before you speak. Today we have people that, that speak before they think because of the wickedness that's in their heart, of course, what's happening in the world today. People are, are constantly just filling themselves with wickedness and, and, and constant just hearing constant things on, on t or watching constant things on TV, hearing constant things on the radio, and they're just repeating just, just rubbish, right? So, but there is a time, like, I, I'm not saying that sparing your lips all the time is the right way to, live, to, to be a righteous man, right? Because there is times where you have to say what is right, it says, Isaiah 5, uh, 58, 1, it says, cry aloud. Spe and, and preachers will often use this to why they preach hard or, or something like that. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. So there is a time to, to, to speak. And what's that time? What's that time? To, to show people their transgressions. The, and it says the house, and to show the house, uh, and the house of Jacob their sins. So there is a time where you need to say something, where you, you, your words have to be not not spared. So you have to say if someone's in error, then you should reprove them, right? So if if people aren't being reproved, then they they might not know that they are, are doing something wrong, right? And so they and. And maybe they're not reading their Bibles to know what they're doing wrong. And when they hear reproof, as, as we're, I'm sure we all have in our lives from, from another Christian or from a, from a parent, um, we should be, have a heart to receive reproof and correct ourselves, right? So if you turn to uh, Ephesians 5.3, Ephesians 5.3, we'll go through most of Ephesians 5. But fornication, sorry. So, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it be, let it not be named among you. Or let it not be once named among you. So it shouldn't even be named amongst us once, as become as saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inherent inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. 
Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So I, know, I just highlight, I just underline there, children. It's talking about Christ's children. It's talking about saved people. So let no man deceive you with vain words, right? For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. It says, so don't be deceived by these people. Right? In verse 7, I've underlined verse 7. Be not, uh, be, uh, be not ye therefore partakers with them. So we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't even be partaking with them. We shouldn't be around them. Right? For ye were sometimes darkness, were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all good, uh, goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And what does it say here? And have no fellowship with, their, with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So that, that's what I was saying before. You should reprove them, that, that, that's it, someone that's in error. But also just don't, don't have fellowship with them until they're reproved. For it is a shame, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So don't have fellowship with these people. And these, these people are brothers and sisters. According to this verse, these, these uh, verses here, it says these people are brothers and sisters in Christ. So they, they need to be reproved and they need to get right. And, and we see this, that this is a biblical doctrine also, and it's also found throughout the Bible. Here, where people, once, that, once you put them away, they, they shouldn't be around us. Once they hear reproof, which is a biblical concept, then they should, then they should and if they receive that reproof and they want to be forgiven, then they should be forgiven. It says here in Matthew 18, 21, 22, it says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee unto seven times, but rather unto seventy times seven. So he's using just a great number, right? So not, not seven times. So once you get to the eighth time, oh, can't, you can't come back anymore. can't forgive you anymore. Now he's using a great number unto 70, and, uh, 70 times seven times, right? So if, you, if, if someone needs to be reproved, and they're willing to come back, and they're willing to be forgiven, then that, uh, it's a biblical concept, and it's taught by Jesus that they uh, should be forgiven. But now, 1 Corinthians 5, if you just turn to 1 Corinthians 5, and, and um, but now we've, we've, we've been hearing this passage a lot, brought up a lot lately um, in, our, in our circles, but nothing's, I had to put this in, nothing's more sweeter than God's word. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. So he's, Paul's written unto the Corinthian church not to keep company with any man that is called a brother, be a fornicator a, a, or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such and one know not to eat. So if any man is a, is a railer, if anyone's proven to be a railer, just falsely accusing someone that's, that's not coming to the conclusion, that's just going to speak lies. If I was to go up and speak lies about Brother Lewis, and just, just I'm not going to confront him about it. I just know he's doing it. I just know he's, he's, he's some sort of heretic. He's teaching false doctrine or whatever. And I'm not going to confront him about it. Then I'm a railer, right? And what does it say? First, don't have company with them. Don't even eat with them. So don't even, have a, don't even share a meal with them, which is what the Bible is telling us. And if, 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 if we're not keeping this concept, then we're not, we don't believe the Bible. We're not applying God's word. We're actually in disobedience if, if, if we're in company with a railer. If we're eating with a known railer, and we know he's a railer. We, we know that this person, he or she, is speaking false things about some other person. Then 
by eating with them, by keeping company with them, we're in disobedience to God's word. Continue in verse 12. For what have I... Uh, for what have I to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without, God judges. Therefore, therefore, put away from, uh, from among yourselves that wicked person. Now, what's the railer? What's the extortioner as well? And what's the covetous person? He's a wicked person. So put them away. It should, they shouldn't be here. We shouldn't have company with people like this, right? People that talk falsely about someone else that's, that's a known railer. You shouldn't have company with them. And we, we're commanded to judge them uh, um, that are within, right? And I, I believe that's, that's in terms of salvation. So uh, them that are without, my belief is that them that are without salvation, them that don't have Christ, right? And them that are within are those that have Christ. Maybe brothers and sisters in Christ or church members or so forth. So them that are without, God would judge us, right? But them that are within, we should judge, right? And a, and a railer is a wicked person. There's, there's no two ways around it. There's no, well, he's a man of God or something like that. No, no, no. He's a railer. Don't eat with that person. It doesn't matter how great that person was for 10 years or, or, or what he's done with his life in the past. If, if, if he's a known railer, according to the Bible, not according to myself, according to what the Bible says, then don't eat with that person. Don't keep company with that person. That person is a wicked person. And it says, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Right? So, I just want to conclude. Now, we've talked about the right and the wrong ways of the tongue. So, we've talked about the right ways, that the right ways is someone that speaks righteously, that has wisdom. We've talked about those wrong ways of speaking, railing, prating, falsely accusing, lying, so forth. Right? And how they can cause great strife in people's lives. Right? It cause great divisions. Right, but but how how do we uh, how do we bridle the most powerful member in our body, the the, the member that can cause uh, someone to maybe commit suicide or something like that, right? We words and and you hear this now these days people talk about bullying and this and that causing great problems, which is true. Our words can cause someone to kill themselves. Or something like that. But how do, we, how do we bridle this most powerful member in our body? Let's find out. It says in Ephesians 4.29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So what does it say there? That our, our, our words shouldn't be corrupt. Our words should be put unto the use of edifying, of teaching. Of, uh, another, another example of edifying, it, it will, a sermon uh, is edifying, hopefully, this is edifying, right? But all, another use of edifying is soul winning, so people can know about Jesus Christ. That's, that's, a, that's another example of being edified. So our words, our mouth, can be used for edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Ephesians 5.19 Speaking to yourselves Sorry, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So one way of, of bridling our tongue, one way that we don't speak wickedness, that something from our heart doesn't proceed out of our mouth, is to sing, uh, speak into yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Right? If, if you're speaking to yourselves in psalms, if you're reading the, maybe the book of psalms or proverbs, 
and, and singing hymns or spiritual songs, make a melody in your heart, giving thanks unto God, prayer, thanking God for what He's done for you in your lives, right? Submitting, if, if we do this and we fear the Lord, then we will get right with God. We'll, we will we'll get rid of that wickedness that's in our hearts, that's stored in our hearts. If we try to bridle our tongue in these ways. Now, Psalms 37, 30, 30, Psalms 37, 30, the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law, the law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. I've highlighted the law of his God is in his heart, right? So knowing the law of God, having the law of God in your heart, having a full heart filled with the law of God, it will cause you not to pour, uh, to pour out foolish things from your mouth. If I know the Lord's precepts, if I know his laws, if, if they're filled in my heart, then what's filled in my heart is going to come out of my mouth. Remember Luke 6, right? But if I don't know God's law, and I, I don't read my Bible, and I've been saved for 10, 20 years, and I, I just, I don't know his law, you know, murder sinful, da 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 whatever. But I don't know his law, what he says about the tongue, which is what I'm trying to edify you about. If I don't know what the law says about the way we should live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, then of course I'm going to speak wickedness. Of course my heart's going to be foolish, right? But if I know the law, then I won't speak foolishly. Next verse, Psalms 119, 43 to 45, 119, Psalms 119. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have, uh, for I have hoped in thy judgments, so shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. So I shall, if I know the law of God forever and ever, then you will seek after to do the law of God, right? Which will mean, like I said before, that you won't have a heart filled of foolishness. So you're bridling your tongue, knowing, knowing what God's law consists of and what God's law and what the law says about the tongue. You will, you will having that in your hearts, you will know God's precepts and you won't do that. You'll bridle your tongue. So I just want to go back. We've already covered the, these two verses. I'm just wrapping up now with a couple of main points. But back at Luke 6.45. A good man out of the treasure, of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For, at, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So I've, I've explained this to you. But basically, what's in your heart was what will come out of your mouth. And that's why I felt this sermon was for every Christian. That every person in this congregation here today listening to me. And it, I'm, I was in error. I'm, I was still find myself in error. I was still find it hard to tame my tongue. And that's why I wanted to study it out. right? Because I was pulled up once for saying something. And I thought to myself, well, now instead of being rash with thy words then I'll, I, will, I will spareth my words, right? I will not talk harshly about something. I'll just, out of context, I won't prate about something. I'm actually going to study things out. I'm actually going to spare my words, let my words be few. So then when I do speak about something, when I do get right with God, when my heart hasn't got foolish things in it, then I will be count esteemed wise, Right? So we need to get right with God, get our hearts right, because if our heart's not right, then our mouth won't be right, our tongue won't be right. And finishing off with our text verse, back to the text verse, Psalms, where, where I got the title of the sermon from and where I got the idea of the sermon from, um, Psalms 39.1, I said, I will take heed, taking heed is being aware, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue, and I will keep my mouth with a bridle. 
while the wicked is before me. So if, if, if you're in a congregation today, if you're listening and you say, well, yeah, okay, well, yeah, he's got a few points, but tomorrow's a different day and all of a sudden you just, it's gone through one ear and out the other. If you don't take heed to what you say, what the Bible says, if you're not taking heed to what the Bible says about the way we should use our tongue, right, then you should fear the chastisement of our mighty God. Because he's a great God, he's a terrible God, and as his children, he will punish us if we're not willing to tame our tongue, if we're not willing to bridle our tongue, if we're not willing to get right, if our heart isn't willing to repent of our wickedness, then he's going to chastise us as his saved children, right? Hell is for those who don't believe. But now that we believe and we're right, and we put all our faith on the blood of Jesus Christ, what he's done on the cross, right? Now we have a different punishment. We don't have that punishment of hell. That's taken away from us. Our punishment is what's going to happen now on this earth, right? And if we go back to our everyday lives, our everyday work scene, I go back to my everyday job working with, with uh, construction, people in construction, uh, people that that don't bridle their tongue. And I take that all in and I, and I, and I, and I say, look, you know, and I, I just want to enjoy my company with them, right? And I don't focus on what I'm doing and I just, I'm just going to take this all in. If I listen to uh, the morning radio stations on FM, you know, I go home and I listen to or watch, um, I don't even know, I just watch, I just watch, if I was to watch something, I just watch football or something like that. But if I was, what, if I was to watch uh, a, a, a Neighbours or something, Home and Away. If I was to watch those type of shows and I just take, it away, take all that evil in, all that new age philosophy in, what's going to happen? When I, go, when I go about my life tomorrow, what happened last night at six or seven, whenever the show starts, is what I'm going to bring with me the next day and what I'm going to speak about the next day. Right? So we should get right with God. We should fear the Lord we should fear his chastisement as his children and we should get right. Take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue and I will keep my tongue with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach your sermon unto the, your children, Lord. I pray, I pray that uh, I spoke with clarity, Lord. I, I know I'm not the most elegant speaker, Lord, and, and that I didn't do... Uh, much reading in my life, Lord, since getting saved. But while I'm saved, I have this desire to teach people um, um, what they, how to, how to improve their lives, how to receive uh, proof, how to edify people, Lord. So I just pray that this congregation learnt something today, Lord. Um, thank you for the boldness and the courage uh, in during this sermon uh, to preach this uh, to your people, Lord. And I just pray. If there's any people, and we know that there is because no, it, and no man can tame the tongue, Lord. If there's any people that, that need this sermon, that they listen to it again, or, or if they've heard it clearly with clarity, Lord, that they, they under, uh, and understood what, I was, uh, what your word says about the tongue, Lord, that they can get right with you, that they can have a wise heart and a wise tongue, Lord, and they'll uh, bridle their tongue in the, in when it needs to be bridled and spare their words when it needs to be spared, Lord. And, um, and, they can, and they can fill their heart with righteousness, Lord. So I pray all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.